Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today we're looking at Power Automate Desktop and we're looking at how we can actually create a timer. Now why would we want to do this? Well, you may want to create a timer to check how long it takes to run a certain amount of actions or to check how long it takes to send some data somewhere and retrieve it back. Any of these type of reasons, you may want to create a timer. But more obviously, would be a timer for logging some information. Let's say you're creating a log file to decide how long something has run. You want to have an output of that information. So to create a timer, you would think you would use a timer action. However, Power Automate Desktop does not have a timer action. There is no action to run and get the time between a certain point but we can actually use actions that are built into Power Automate Desktop to do this. So how do we actually achieve this then? Well, to do this, we have multiple actions that we have to run to get this. Now I've got a load of actions on my screen in front of me. And as you can see here, the one I've selected is get current date and time. Now, let me explain about how this action works. Firstly, it gets the timestamp and the date stamp when it's triggered. So if I was to run this flow right now, it would get the date and time and save it into a variable. So let's open this up and have a look at it. It says retrieve the current date and time. Now you can get date only, but we want the time because we're trying to get the timestamp to work out when it was triggered and then we're going to work out when it ended. So we need the time in there as well. We're gonna use the system time zone. So we're gonna use the system time and date to calculate this. And then we're going to save it in a variable. Now the first one is called start date and time. So obviously we're going to use one to create the end date and time. So let's hit save on that. So this is the start and then we've got the end. So we put the start at the beginning, obviously, and then we do our actions and then we do an end date and time directly after the actions that we're going to be calculating against. So what is the example that I'm going to be using today? Well, the example is I'm simply pointing at a text document, getting the file path. I'm going to be waiting five seconds and then I'm just going to be writing to that text document. This is an example of how to make a timer. So as you can see over here, I've just got a RPA example text document and that is all we're going to be doing. Simply waiting five seconds after we've got the file path, writing to that file, and then we're going to be calculating the time it takes to do that. Now, obviously it's gonna be over five seconds because we're waiting for five seconds, but we start the date time at the beginning, we do those actions, and then we get the end date and time. So that's exactly the same as what we did before. We do the get current date and time, we retrieve the current date and time, we set the system time zone again, and we just change the variable to end date time. So once we've done that then, once we've run this, and we've got the start date and time, we've run all of our actions, and then we've got the current end date and time as well, we need to subtract dates. So we use the subtract dates action. And what we do here is we pass in the end date and time first, because that's the date and time we're gonna be using. And then we're gonna be subtracting the start date and time from that and we're going to set a get difference in and we're gonna set that to seconds because simply here we are running very fast and we want to get the amount of seconds between that. Now what we can do is we can set minutes, we can set hours and we can set days. Now if you're running a long thing that's going to be running over the course of hours or minutes, that would be a great thing to set. Days, you're likely not to be able, uh, you're likely not to run this, but um, unless like you're uh, going to be using this on the timer, like you're not going to be running this for days, right? You're mainly going to be focusing on seconds. So that's what we're going to be using here. And then you're going to get a variable time difference produced. This is then going to be the calculation on the difference in time. And this is going to be our timer output. So if we hit save here, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to write the actual runtime to the file with the time difference. 
Okay, so let's actually run this then and see what we get back. So I'm just going to close Copilot here and hit run. So you can see over on the right hand side we've got our flow variables and this will be populated. So it's waiting the five seconds and it is now run. Okay, so let's start with the start time. We've got the date and we've got the time. It's currently 8.35 p.m. and it's 10 seconds past. And then we've got the end time and it's 8.35 and it's 16. So that would mean that there is a total of six seconds difference, right? But we can actually do the subtract dates. So we pass in the exact um, end date and time and then the exact start date and time. And we do the calculation and it gives us the actual time difference, which is five seconds, uh, 5.78 seconds. So we get an exact value of how long it actually took to run those three actions. And those three actions again was the file path, the wait five seconds, and then write into text. So waiting five seconds here, we know it only took 0.78 seconds to set the file path variable, as well as write to the file path. And then we've actually written that to the actual file itself. So if we open up this, we can see that it says, this is an example of how to make a timer. It's got the runtime and then it's actually got the seconds. So if you was an individual that was trying to create a timer and you wanted to log that, this is a way of logging that. And we've actually managed to create a timer that has gone through. It's created the start date and time, created the end date and time. It's calculated the amount of time run for those particular actions. We've calculated that by using the subtract dates action for the end date minusing the start date and time and we are left with the exact amount of time uh, it took to run that. So why would you do this then? What is the purpose of this? Well as mentioned at the beginning you may want to calculate the amount of time it takes to run a set of actions and log that. Now you will get the total time flow run, like the time it takes to run the actual flow, if you just run the flow. But you can't calculate the exact amount between a certain amount of actions unless you manually do this yourself. And to do that, you will use two get current date times, the start time and end time, and then you will subtract the time from that. And that is how easy it is to create your own personalized timer in Power Automate Desktop. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button, and I appreciate you watching the video to the end. Bye.